Why do most people think love will fix all their problems? Hi, my name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist with a doctorate in human sexuality. I'm also a relationship coach. You can find me at Eros Coaching. That's eroscoaching.com. So those people who think that love will fix their problems actually are using that as an excuse, uh, in my opinion. They just want to be rescued. Somebody will come and fix all their problems in the name of love. And when they're being rescued, essentially what's happening is they're going to have an easier life. That person will maybe take care of them financially, maybe do all their errands. And what is, is happening is that they are not taking responsibility and having accountability for themselves. So one of the things that needs to happen really, and probably life has a way of giving that to us, is that when we face life's challenges in the face, and we become capable of fixing our own problems, then we get to a stage of being really mature and confident and comfortable with ourselves. We also get to a place of perhaps being able to be at peace and in love with ourselves. This is when we are at our most magnetic and this is when true love that will prevail will enter your life. So it's not love comes in and then it will fix us versus you fix yourself first and then love appears. So you might say, well, you know, that's not going to happen. There are people who get married and they have all their dysfunction and issues and work through it. Guess what? Just because you are in a marriage, in a relationship, it's a long-term relationship. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy. There are lots of people who bring their issues into the relationship thinking that they will get resolved what happens is they get swept under the carpet, they get repressed, suppressed, until it comes to a point where they cannot. And uh, more couples are now seeking marriage counseling as it's becoming more popular. However, there are people who have what we call starter marriages for these precise reasons why they didn't work out. And then have to go on a journey of really taking ownership for themselves. So this is my opinion. And that the inner work that needs to take place will take, just like a hero's journey, will take courage, will take solitude, meaning being by yourself, will take persistence, and often some kind of facilitated support and guidance. And this is what professionals like myself do. Uh, so there are many different kinds of professionals out there. There are people who focuses only on marriage issues, uh, some on only relationships, some on dating, some on sex. Uh, I'm a sex and relationship coach. And unlike some people who just have a degree and then start calling themselves a relationship or sex coach, um, I actually have gone through um, specialized training. So you want to check out the credentials of whoever it is that you're hiring. You want to look around not just for credentials, but also word of mouth referrals, because if they have a positive experience with someone, then more likely that you can trust that this person knows what they're doing. And thirdly is don't just look at the paper, don't just look at word of mouth, but also trust your intuition. Is this the person that feels right for you? You also need to have a rapport with that professional so I hope this gives you some food for thought. This is Martha of Arrows Coaching. I'd love to hear from you. You can post your comments below and you can also email me at ask at arrowscoaching.com.